Okay, so it is a rainy day, and in today's video, we're gonna put the YDS software on a Windows 11 machine. We're gonna hook it up to the boat. I'm gonna show you how to do this all so it works perfect every time. Let's get started. Okay, everyone, so to get started, head over to my YouTube channel, and in my YDS software overview, this is actually one of my first videos that I've done, um, you can go ahead and scroll down to the description and you'll find the link for the software download. Of course, you're gonna also find it in this video as well. So we're gonna go and click on that link. And that's gonna bring up a new tab and it's gonna bring up this Yamaha YDS folder. Um, go ahead and right click on that and we're just gonna go ahead and hit download and we're gonna let this download. Okay, now it's gonna head and download and it's gonna save, save it wherever you're gonna save it. We'll just save it on the desktop, make this easy. And it's gonna be compressed, it's gonna be zipped, but that's all right. Uh, and now that it's on our desktop, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and right click on this and we are going to extract all. We're just, it's just gonna put it in the default location where it's, where it's originating from, so on, back on the desktop. Perfect, that's all done. It's gonna go ahead and open up the folder. So let's go ahead and click on this. Let's go down to the third folder, this USB FTDI. And we're gonna click on this one right here in the middle with the little red circle, CDM version 2. Point blah, blah, blah. Of course, this is the application. We will right click, and this is the key. We will right click on this. We are going to run as administrator. Yes, yes. So now we're gonna go ahead and extract. It's gonna do its thing. We're gonna go ahead and click on next. It's gonna go ahead and the drivers are successfully installed. And we're gonna hit finish. Now we're gonna go ahead and come and hit the back button. And we're gonna come down here, we're gonna click on the YDS setup program. And we can just double click this. Yes, we can go ahead and agree to that. We're just gonna go ahead and hit next. Gives us the directories it's gonna install. We'll go ahead and hit finish. Okay, so now that we got that done, we can go ahead and close this. <clears throat> now, we need to go ahead and navigate to our device manager. Easiest way to do that is to come down to your little search thing, type in device, it'll populate. We're gonna click on that. And this is where we're going to be able to, to adjust our communication port settings. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go do our universal serial bus controller. And we're going to see all these controllers. These are the currently installed USB root um, controllers. I'm actually plugging in my um, data link cable. And let's plug that in. And there we go. So the one that just popped up, that is this USB serial converter. Now we're gonna do something to verify that this is it. Say it comes up and you, you can't tell. Let's go ahead and right click on this. Let's hit properties. Manufacture, FTDI. If you remember when we were installing our software, FTDI. So that right there is telling us that, yep, that is actually it. What we are going to do now is we're gonna make a change. We are gonna come over here to our ports. Again, this is our USB serial port and it is already on communication port three. So let's go ahead up here, let's hit properties. Let's go over here to port settings. Let's go to advance and look at that, COM port three. We don't want that. We wanna change this to the first communication port. We're gonna hit OK. We're gonna hit OK again. And there we go, we got changed to COM port one. And so now we're gonna close everything. Again, to find our YDS software, we can just type in YDS. It's gonna bring it up. And before we head out to the, actually before I head out to the boat, let's go ahead and we'll open up the YDS software. We're gonna hit enter. Bada bing, bada boom. We are gonna go ahead and update the database first thing. So let's hit, let's click on that or press F1. Press enter to update the database file. Hit okay. 
Let's go to the back to the YDS, it just closes it. And there we go, database has been updated. It's just, uh, this software is just I'm t from, you get it from Amazon, eBay, anyone, unless you buy this from OEM Yamaha. It's just, I think it's just some type of hack that they have in place to do this. So you just have to do the update database. And now you can see we have 1.3 March 2010, there we go. So that's it. So now let's go ahead and head out to the boat and we'll plug this in and verify that the tool is working properly. All right, everyone. I'm out here in the boat. It's a junky rainy day, that's why we're doing this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my USB tool. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in to the motor. Let's see, we'll go on the poor motor. Let's see how many hours are on this thing. There we go. Undo that connector, plug that in. Probably turn my batteries are still on, so that's good. Okay, and again, before we do this, we have to bump the motor in order to turn the ECU on. Even though your battery is on, you go and turn your switches on, the battery, the ECU is still turned off. It's got a timer on it, they do that so you don't wear out your battery sitting there floating and this and that. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump the port motor over. Keys left on, there we go. Let's see if this works. Let's go ahead and hit enter, start using the tool. Press any key to continue. All right, so we got our screen up, scan tool. We can go ahead and click on this, or we can just hit the, we can just hit one. And there we go. Let's go ahead and look at our engine monitor test. Number three, there we go. Everything is up and running. We'll go through all these devices for you to give you an idea of what everything does. Let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and start with diagnostics. Do I got any, do we got, um, everything's looking good. These are all the different, these are all the different um, sensors that are monitored. No wake mode, um, battery voltage, intake temp. This is everything in here. This is gonna tell you if you have a, if you have a, um, a, um, a fault in anything. Let's go down to our diagnostic records. Do we have any codes on here? No, we don't. Total hours of operation, 362 on this motor. Let's go down to our engine monitor. So here we can watch real live voltage. Um, we have all of our different things. We have atmosphere pressure, intake pressure, engine speed, and um, throttle valve opening, throttle positioning voltage, and there's gonna be a whole slew of things in here. If you have no idea what any of this stuff means, that's okay. Most of you are just probably trying to either gather codes or see engine codes. We'll go ahead and go down to our stationary test. Here's where we can operate the injectors, we can operate the fuel pump. So say we wanna energize the fuel pump, for two reasons. If you ever wanted to drain your tank real easily, say you got water in it, you could disconnect your fuel line going to your injector rail. You could operate the fuel pump and then you can run a hose off of that into a fuel jug and you can pump your tank out without ever having to take the hatch off. A little trick of the trade. Of course, we do this in the automotive industry too as well. We can, op we can operate the injectors. We can see all kinds of things with this. Our active tests. We can drop a cylinder. If you got a misfire, this is fantastic. So say you think cylinder number one is the issue. You can go ahead and run the motor. You can drop the cylinder and see if there's a change or no change. That's typically what we do this test for. And by dropping it, it's gonna just go ahead and it's gonna pull injector and um, spark. Our data logger, this is where you would want to um, graph something, say you're doing a a water test with the engine running and you're trying to see if you're getting any hiccups with a injector spark or something hardly anyone's going to use this and the people that are going to use this um, they don't need to watch a video on how to use it to be honest with you um, engine operating hours according to engine speed this is what everyone's probably going to be looking at this is going to tell you pretty much the um, your total hours broken down into 2000 RPM segments. So for 
most of us, a majority of our hours are going to be at no wake mode, um, you know, no wake speeds, getting in and out of the marinas and your typical cruising speed, which is, you know, 7,500 RPMs, you know, just cruising around the lake. And then from there, we have some files. This is if you wanted to load a graph, which none of you are probably gonna do. And that's pretty much it. We go back to our main menu, and that is it. We can go ahead and exit the program now. And again, bada bing, bada boom. We'll show that one more time. We'll go ahead and connect to our YDS software. And if you want to be cool, you can change your colors. I don't know why. But anyway, so let's go ahead and start using the tool. Press any key to continue. Press OK. Any key to continue. So a communication error has occurred between the PCM and ECM. The reason this just happened is because we exited the software and the computer noticed that the, the link between the software and the ECM was disconnected. So went ahead and turned the ECM back off as a battery saving um, feature. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. We'll come back, I'll bump the engine over again. We'll hit start um, using the tool, enter, press any key to continue, and voila, it's back up. Just like that. And again, we can go to our scan tool and we can go through everything again. So, um, and again, this is just, if you have a boat, I don't know why you wouldn't get this. Everyone's got computers these days. To me, it just makes a uh, it just makes sense, and that way you know your hours for maintenance and everything else. So there we go. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. A um, couple key points to take from this: number one, when you install that first file, the drivers you need to run it as an administrator. That is key. That puts a certain registry um, edit in your system, allows this whole thing to work. Number two is going into your device manager and adjusting the communication port of that serial database to COM port number one. It's probably going to be set to three, it could be set to two, it could be set to one also. It just, it's very, I don't know what the rhyme or reason is to it, but you got to set it to number one. Um, once that's done, opening up the YDS and importing the database, the software will close, then you open it back up. And that's it. So those three points are key to making the whole thing work. And then once you do that, you're good to go. It should work on Windows 7, Windows XP, if you have an XP machine still, Windows 10, 11, all of them, 32-bit, 64-bit architecture, doesn't matter. Those are the key steps. And if you do that, it will work. If you do all of that and it doesn't work, then you have a USB um, host controller issue. This is like the software the chipset that controls your USB ports, then you have an issue there, and then you're on your own. I'm sorry, I can only do so much. So again, thank you very much for watching the videos. Put comments up. You guys running into issues, running into um, problems. I'll try to answer them if I can't answer them, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye. Jet boat, baby, jet boat.